In this video what I want to do is show you how to use the deep take editor to control the terrain, the height map and in turn to create models. So we're going to model geometry from the deep take editor that's going to become in the end a mesh which means it can either be used in Bryce or it can be exported and used to render in other software. I've got things set up in the default setting and since I'm calling this an advanced video then I expect that you will have a fair understanding of the way that the deep take editor works. So we'll get on and create our lattice which we're going to preview the geometry on. So if I hold control down and click on the lattice here that'll bring it in the default grey material. I'll just enlarge it and rotate it and lift it up a bit and this is just so we can uh, crudely preview the shape that we're creating using the train editor and the deep texture editor. So there you go that's come in with whatever its default height map is. Now if we go into the terrain lab for this object and click on picture while, and this is in critical bit, holding the shift key down, that allows us to go into the deep text editor. Once that's been done, you can't paint in the terrain lab. It will always refer to whatever this function is that we put in here. As things stand, nothing's in here at the moment. So what I'm going to do is turn on the alpha channel. I'm going to click on these blobs here to bring in the controls. We're going to use all these, noise, phase and the filter, to control our effect. In the noise, I'm going to start off with distance origin. And my aim, I'll give it a bit of frequency so we've got something there, and 2D, is to have a blob positioned in the middle of this square. And this output square, that will become our height map. So I'll just show you that briefly. There you go, you can see at the moment we've got this dip in the corner. My first thing I want to do is create a blob, a raised area in the middle. So shift, click on picture, go back in here. So that's the wrong way up and it's in the wrong position. So I can sort the, the to get it the right way up, I can use a smooth clip for example, reset this filter, and then I can reverse this filter by fiddling with the filter if I can just remember how to do it, and create create a negative sense so that can create a blob but the blobs in the corner and I want the blob in the middle so get a bit crafter here we click on phase and instead of nothing I select sign and then if I select 2d okay I just use the phase value to push this blob along but it's pushing it off in this direction and I need to get it to push it off in this direction the angle of phase effect in this case is going to be controlled by the orientation of what we've got in the noise channel. So if I rotate this around 180 degrees, like so, when I apply phase, I, that means I can move it off and up to the right instead of it vanishing off down to the left where we can't see it. So if I set this up now, say 24 seems to be about central for this particular frequency, which is 6, I can then fiddle with the smooth clip filter here and hopefully get that raised blob in the middle effect that I was looking for, like so. So that's the first thing. So you can preview what that looks like just by going out of here. You'll notice that sometimes that the filter diagram just vanishes for some reason. This is a bug in Bryce. If you want to get it back and you don't, it doesn't have a C component and only a quantization, and there's I think one other that uses the C value, then just adjusting that will make it reappear which is a little bit inconvenient, but never mind. OK, so you can see now we've achieved that raised blob in the middle look. And the beauty of controlling this with the deep take editor uh, is you can save those functions in the, uh, in the texture library, and also they work for different resolutions. So if we just wanted a higher resolution version of this, we'd turn the terrain up and then go back and, well, I'll show you how that works, so rather than talk about it. So let's get on and make this a bit more interesting. So shift back in here. I'm going to store this actually I'm going to store this in the final component so just click on all three components switch that on and then we'll come back to number one because uh, I've having set this up with the phase function so I can push things around that's ideal for what I want to do next so the next function in the noise I'll just modify this to sign there we go and instead of the smooth clip I'm going to use a sign function in here reset it and then wind the frequency up you can see something's happening off to one side here so I'm going to increase the frequency and get a f and get one of these right in the middle, like so. So I've um, just positioned that in the middle, so that's at uh, 22 now. And then if I increase the frequency of the sine function, you can see it's raising and lowering this accordingly. So if I now combine that uh, with this uh, second function, for example, I'll use multiply, then that brings the edges down. 
by multiplying these dark areas and lowering these areas so I can have a raised pattern like this and then suppress it at the edges so it localizes it now you can see what the effect is here and if we go out you can see what the effect is there so now the shape is getting a bit more interesting now I'll go back into the uh, not into the train editor yes and shift down and click on picture right from bearing in mind that I've already stored this for the final one here so I'll switch this one to uh, multiply and I'm going to work on the second component now uh, what I'll do is I'll drag and drop that one over and instead of using multiply I'll use average for example and in this case what I'm going to do is increase the frequency of this noise here so I can get uh, nine of these shapes in and if if I need to adjust the position, if that one's not quite in the center, then you can just shuff the f shuffle the phase up and down, and that'll reposition it. So that's um, about there. So there you go. That's more or less in the middle. So average means that uh, it's well, just averaging these two height values, and then multiplying by this one that drops the edges down. The idea of dropping the edges down is that it makes it fit nicely inside this uh, area because we we've got this cutaway which is controlled by the bottom of this bracket and some people have had problems with the bottom of this bracket. It is quite difficult to get hold of. You can adjust that because you've also got the effect of adjusting that which doesn't really change anything except the preview as you can see. So uh, you can accidentally get hold of the wrong thing. So if you need to change this clipping it's, you have to get hold of right the very bottom edge of that uh, curly bracket there. The top edge also drops which means you can allow for cut off the clipping from the top but we don't want to do that in this case so I'm just clipping this so it doesn't touch the edge and I'm set this to solid because that will just help with the preview rendering because if, if this edge is exposed it'll create a hole in the in the side there so we don't want that I'm just going to clip that back a bit so we've got some openings there check out of that and that gives us an interesting shape right a final bit of this then and just turning this around so you can see that uh, the way the way that the lattice joins there's this irritating seam along the edge there there's not only really very good way to get rid of that I'm uh, sorry to say but uh, maybe in future versions but our final step will be to export this at a higher resolution and I want to draw your attention to the fact that there's th the low resolution nature of this um, particular height map has resulted along these sharp edges in, the, in some little teeth. I want to be rid of that so the way to do that, get rid of that, is to increase the resolution of this height map. Uh, work on a lower resolution and then go up to a higher resolution because when it generates this image from the deep texture editor it can take some time depending on the resolution. So select your massive resolution for final exporting and rendering. It won't increase the resolution of the height map until you've been in and out of the deep texture editor so I'll hold down the shift key go in there if at this point you want to save this pattern you've got the library here so you can click on the library and just add it to your library so I'll call that uh, tar get pattern for TE DTE so I know what it's for you see I've had a few goes at this always takes a few goes to record these videos. Right, check out of that, now I've got it in the library and I need to check out of this and it'll take a little while to regenerate as you can see with the cursor being stalled there and then it's now regenerated this at a higher resolution and I check out of here you can see it's a little bit slower now working with the high resolution terrain and that will just sort those teeth out on the edge and then if we want to export this for use in another piece of software so we go file and export object with this thing selected. We're going to save it as an ob wavefront object because that works nicely with uh, Octane for example and call this uh, well, object uh, 1. OK, save that and at this point you get to choose the resolution of your object. You don't want to export any channels here because it takes a long time for Bryce to work out any kind of UV mapping for these shapes and it doesn't do a very good job. There are other tutorials on my site that deal with that. Look for exporting objects from Bryce to Octane where I've looked in detail at capturing the texture information from objects such as these terrains and lattices. You can do a better of a job of it yourself when it doesn't take as long as it does in this little exporter. So just make sure all those are turned off essentially, long story short. And turn this control up until you're satisfied with the resolution. 
go for very high resolution if you want and then you'll get a very good fidelity obviously it'll take uh, more memory when you export it or and load it into whatever software you're going to use and then just click on that and it does the generation of the object in saving it the this shouldn't take very long even with such a huge resolution object so long as you're not trying to save any material information if you try to save material inf information you might as well go away and make a cup of coffee or tea your choice there you go so that's the end of the tutorial uh, there's the shape and uh, you do whatever you want with it after that I just thought it was quite interesting to synthesize these shapes using the deep texture editor because it will give a different effect from using other shape synthesis methods this is menus hanging around because of Camtasia Studio I was going to mention Wings 3D it's, it's a nice little model that you can use to generate shapes but it wouldn't create shapes quite like this and there's quite a few other programs out there that generate shapes but again they're unlikely to come up with the same kind of the same quality of geometry that you get from using the deep deep texture editor so I think in that sense it's a valid way of producing geometry even if you don't do your final renders in Bryce it will give you interesting results so there you go that's the end of the tutorial I hope you uh, enjoy experimenting with this method